Meditation is something incredibly prevalent in today's modern world. The thing is, I often ask people, hey, have you tried meditation? And they tell me no, and I ask why, and they say, oh, I can't meditate, and I ask, why can't you meditate? And they say, ah, I get too fidgety, uh, too many thoughts in my head, I, it's not for me. The thing is, that's exactly what meditation is. The reasons why people say they can't meditate are in fact the definitions of meditation. How I see it, a lot of people see meditation as sitting down and being in total zen, focusing on nothing except maybe your breath. But meditation is all about getting fidgety and having a bunch of thoughts come into your head, having so many thoughts come in you can't keep track of them all. That's what meditation is about. So today I wanted to talk about three strategies I use to start meditating whenever I feel like meditation is impossible. Hi internet, my name is Mark and I'm a student studying in New York City. I've had meditation as a part of my life for a really long time and reworking that back into my routine has been an irregular, tough and inconsistent process. However, every time I've gotten back into it, it's been super helpful. Meditation is just sitting down and being alone with your thoughts. The focusing on your breath and attempting to approach nirvana, that all comes later down the road. That's like level 50 meditation. Sitting down and being alone is something scary in its own right. Thoughts come up all the time and you're supposed to have these thoughts. We are human. It is built into our biology to have our attention pulled by things all the time. Anyway, when you sit down to try to meditate, you're supposed to get fidgety. You're supposed to have these thoughts of, oh my God, three years ago when I went to that restaurant and the waitress said, enjoy your food. And I said, you too. Oh, so those are supposed to come up. It's natural. It's a part of the meditation process process. Meditation is not about the absence of thought. It is about the acknowledgement of the presence of thought. It's not about having absolutely no thoughts at all. It's about when a thought comes up, you say hello, and then you move on. Eventually, so to speak, you'll get to the point where you can do this really well, but it's not going to be easy at the start. Meditation doesn't come across this way as a skill, but in a sense, it works like one. While you don't need to be good at meditation to get the benefits from it, it can be really hard to just do it for the first time. Marcus Aurelius writes, Delve within. Within is the fountain of good, and it is always ready to bubble up if you always delve. In other words, sometimes in silence, we get the answers that we're looking for. We get questions we didn't even know we had. And meditation can be so helpful in our day-to-day -day lives. So how can we make time for it? So a mindset that I've been trying to adapt over the past few months is that I want to make time for things, not find time. It's not about, oh, I don't have time for that. It's about, I'm not going to make time for that. If you can't do something, the easiest thing to say is, oh, I don't have time. Oops, don't have time. You do. Are you willing to make time for it? Anyway, the three strategies I'm going to discuss in this video require one minute of your time, maybe 15 seconds on either end of your minute because you need to set yourself up. But here's where you can find that minute. This is different between iPhone and Android, but each phone has a specific app that can tell you your tracking metrics. On Android, it's called focus mode. And on your iPhone, I'm sure a lot of you have this, you can usually swipe left, find your usage time. Don't mind my phone being in Portuguese. And you can see how much time you spent on your phone. Take one minute away from that time. Show yourself this is how much time you're sitting down and spending on Instagram, on Twitter, on Snapchat, whatever it is, take one minute out of that. Make time for meditation by taking away one minute from your social media use. Another reason I've heard, uh, oh, I, I don't want to meditate. That's such a waste of time. Thing is, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, most of the time we're on those platforms. Those are also a waste of time. The thing is, they don't feel like a waste of time. First strategy. I've done this in two cases. One, my meditation habit has totally fallen off the rails, which it has recently. Or I'm feeling way too attached to my phone. I recently, quote unquote, downgraded from a Samsung S9, which is why I still have it, to my sister's old iPhone 6 she gave me like a year ago. It's simpler. That's another story, I guess. Regardless, this is the strategy that I want everyone to try. Even if you're a seasoned meditator, I'd encourage you to give this a shot. This is an experiment I've devised. Maybe it exists elsewhere in the world, but it's what I do. This is a practice I call notification resistance meditation. The idea is highly based off of social media notifications. Your phone goes ding. Oh, you have to check it. Okay, got my notification back to whatever I was doing. The thing is, we don't have to check it. What if that social media notification went off while you were writing your essay and you just didn't check it? That's the idea behind meditation. The notification notifications in this case are just our thoughts. First thing first, you're going to take out a device that distracts you. It could be your phone. It could be your Nintendo Switch. Whatever it might be, a phone is a really great case because I feel like everyone has notifications going on. Whatever app you want to use, you're just going to go ahead, open your phone and set a timer for one minute. Then find a comfortable space to sit. It could be a chair like this one. It could be the floor. Whatever is comfortable. You don't have to be in a lotus position or anything. Just feet flat on the floor in a chair. Maintain your posture. That's all you need. Then you're going to start the timer 
and you're just going to look at whatever is in front of you. Now, for this entire minute, this 60 seconds of what might feel like pure agony is you're just going to focus on the thoughts that come to mind. Don't focus on shutting them down. Don't try and focus on your breath or anything. Simply observe what thoughts come to mind, what sort of answers find their way to the surface in the silence. Anyone can spare a minute in your day. If you can come up with an excuse why you cannot spare one minute of your day, please let me know in the comments down below because I cannot imagine anything. And if there is genuinely a reason out there, I would love to hear it. However, you are watching a YouTube video that's roughly 10 minutes, so you might really want to think about that excuse. For me, my constant thought is, oh my god, maybe the timer's not going to go off. Maybe I'm in do not disturb mode. Maybe it's just stopped working. What kind of thoughts emerged for you? I'd really love to hear in the comments down below. Thing number two is guided meditations, which pretty much speak for themselves. It can be really difficult to just sit and be alone with yourself. So putting on a 10 minute, 50 minute audio from Headspace or waking up with Sam Harris or something from Insight Timer, which is free by the way, they have a ton of guided meditations. I'd highly recommend Insight Timer. These are just guided meditations that help you get along with your meditation. They instruct you on how to just sit and be in the moment. Um, yeah, that was it. Number three is my second favorite meditation practice to do, and it is the distraction journal meditation practice. This was sort of derived from having a distraction journal while I'm doing work. For example, if you're working on an essay and you have a thought about this new game that's coming out in a week, write it down in the journal, and then when you finish your work block for the essay, come back to all of those thoughts. Essentially, we're telling ourselves, oh, okay, I'm not gonna think about this right now, but it's an important thought, so I wanna make sure I revisit it later. Oftentimes, I forget about them anyway, because they're just not that important. Hydration check. This is also a really great intermediate step for getting from, oh man, I'm fidgety and all these thoughts are coming up to total zen, focusing on only your breath. Anyway, the idea behind this meditation and focusing on your breath is that when a thought comes up, you sort of say, oh, you know what? I'm having this thought right now. We're going to focus on the breath again to come back to the moment. Well, the distraction journal is right next to you during your meditation. So you can pick it up and you can write down that thought and come back to it later. And that is what meditation is all about, is observing these thoughts, letting them come to mind and just not dealing with them right now. So again, take out your phone, set a timer for one minute, go sit down and keep a journal and a pen or, you know, just a blank piece of paper and a pencil in front of you and if a thought comes up write it down and try to not think about it for the next you know 20 seconds that you have in your session when we actually meditate this is what we're meant to do a thought comes up and instead of thinking about hmm you know i wonder if that book did get to my sister well i dropped it off at you we write down did book get to sister you know what 40 seconds later i'm gonna then think about this maybe i text my sister or whatever the thoughts can feel so important when they come up just like when you get a text from your friend it can feel so important in the moment but in reality you can always deal with it in a couple minutes down the line. With this journal strategy, we get used to the feeling. Eventually you can, you know, eliminate the journal and be on your way to actual meditation. Just yesterday, I sat down for 15 minutes before bed and I just let the thoughts flow. The train of thought was leaving the station and it was on to its destination. It happens. So again, it's okay to be fidgety. It's okay to have these thoughts come to mind. And when building any habit, consistency breeds improvement. If you start meditating for 60 seconds a day, you'll slowly be able to build that habit. If you stay 60 seconds a day for the next five years, that's okay. If you find yourself building up to five, 10, 15 minutes, that's all the 60 seconds is here to do. You're starting there and you'll see where it takes you. The best you can do is try. I could talk a lot longer about meditation, but this video is just a starter for you. It's just to jump into it. It is simply to help show you that you can meditate. The only way we can confirm whether or not we can do something is by simply doing it. You can sit down, you can get fidgety for 60 seconds, but if you've successfully just sat there and been alone with your thoughts, you successfully meditated. And as you build up that consistent habit, you can maybe do it for longer, learn to be alone with ourselves in today's world with everything vying for our attention is a super important skill. If you want to know more about meditation and what impact it can have on your life, I recommend a book by Dan Harris called 10% Happier. It was a super good book. Anyway, that's all for today, folks. Just remember, when you say, I can't, is it really because you can't or is it because you won't? The reason why I say that is because you should try it. Stick with it. If it's something you really want to try, give it a shot and you'll see that you can do it too. Of all these things though, meditation is one of the best because all it asks for is 60 seconds of just you. That being said, thanks so much for watching. I have a video on why I think lists are super helpful, not just because they help list out our tasks, but because they can help fight mental overwhelm just as meditation can. But yeah, have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you next week.